the proof technique used to prove the LGV lemma is a very um, useful one and it's uh, called a proof by sign reversing involution. So before going to the proof of the LGV lemma itself, uh, I thought it'd be nice to show you a couple of simple examples of proofs by sign reversing involution. Let's look at um, a very simple example which uh, we have encountered while also studying a Mobius inversion on the lattice of subsets of a given set. So uh, show that summation k goes from 0 to n minus 1 raised to k n choose k equal to 0. Of course, this is also uh, the binomial expansion of 1 minus 1. But uh, just to illustrate this technique, let me give you a proof of this using sign reversing um, involutions. So this inequality is uh, enough, uh, is, is equivalent to, we have to show that the sum over all subsets of n minus 1 raised to the cardinality of s is 0 because after all uh, the number of subsets of n of cardinality k is exactly n choose k. So the, the identity that I have given is the same as what I have written down below. Now one way to show this is to define a function an involution. An involution is a function whose square is the identity composed with itself gives the identity. So, we will call this i from uh, the power set of the set of n elements to the power set of the set of n elements. So, this is a set of order 2 to the power n by i of s is um, s union n if n does not belong to s. So, the union singleton n if n does not belong to s. And it is S minus uh, the point N if N belongs to S. So if N is in the set S, remove it. If N is not in the set S, you add N to it. Now the order of S changes by exactly 1. And so what we have is the sine of S is uh, the sine of I S is the negative of the sine of S. And so what we get is the sum over all s in n of, uh, so here what I mean by sine of s is minus 1 raised to cardinality of s. So sine of s is equal to sum over s in n sine of i of s, of course because i is a bijection. Um, so, I am just replacing each s by i, but sine of i of s is minus sine of s. So, this is, so this sum is equal to its own negative and hence 0. Which is what we had to show. Let us look at a second example which is slightly more um, uh, difficult. Uh, show that summation k goes from 0 to n minus 1 raised to k n choose k squared is well it is either minus 1 raised to n by 2 n choose n by 2 if n is even and it is 0 if n is odd. So, what we will do now is uh, again we will uh, define us sign associated to elements which are counted by this set. So, let x be the set 
uh, of all collections s comma t such that s is a subset of n t is also a subset of n and the cardinality of s plus the cardinality of t is equal to n i.e s and t have complementary cardinality uh, in n i'm not saying that they are complementary sets just that their cardinalities are uh, are complementary so th and then we define sine of s comma t to be just minus 1 raised to cardinality of s and so what we have is that the left hand side of this identity is the sum over s comma t in uh, x sine of s comma t. Now let's define an involution. as follows i of s comma t is equal to s comma t if s is equal to t okay so if s and t are equal then you take this pair s comma t to be a fixed point of the involution i otherwise if s is not equal to t then we know that the union of s union t uh, properly contains the intersection of s uh, and t the union of s and t properly contains the uh, intersection of s and t so let x be the minimum element of s union t minus s intersection t this set is sometimes called the symmetric difference of s and t the elements which are in exactly one of the two sets and uh, okay so if x belongs to s uh, then define i s t to be uh, s union x sorry it's already in x so s minus x and t union x so you move x from s to t if it is in s and if x belongs to t you move it from t to x s so this is a sign reversing involution and the fixed points are those subsets those pairs s comma t where s is equal to t so what we have is that the sum over um, s comma t in x such that s is not equal to t of sine of uh, s t well this is equal to uh, the its own negative because i have defined a sine reversing involution on this set and hence is equal to 0 and so what we get is that the sum that we wanted to compute the sum s t in x sine of s comma t is only the sum over the fixed points of this involution i so it's a sum over uh, cardinality of, of s equal to t sine of s comma t but that is nothing but um, so if s is equal to t well s and t have complementary cardinality which means that the cardinality of s has to be uh, equal to uh, n uh, half of the card half of the cardinality of half of n so that so s and t are the same set that if if n is odd then there are no such sets and if n is even this just gives us minus 1 raised to n by 2 n choose n by 2 if n is even and it gives us 0 if n is odd.